This week on Elkara Ham Radio, we're going to install two more batteries at our solar-powered abandoned repeater site. And anytime lead-acid batteries are in play, grimaces are going to happen as we transport those batteries into the shack. And as we start adding those connectors and wires, more grimaces as we utilize those crimpers. This week on Elkara Ham Radio. Welcome back to El Cara Ham Radio, where we're going to disconnect the solar charger and add two more batteries during this workday at the abandoned repeater site. In fact, we probably ought to quit calling it the abandoned repeater site because we're using it again, so it's not technically abandoned. But we disconnected some things on the uh, power distribution panel or where the solar power comes in, moving the bench over so that we'll be able to cover the batteries a little bit better down on the floor. And then we have additional repeaters that we're going to be installing once we have the new power online. You can see the two batteries here at the bottom of the cabinet. That's what we've been using. The solar chargers worked great to keep those where they needed to be. AC4DM once again fabricated an isolation block here where we can bring in our positive and negative leads from the batteries uh, to uh, a centralized point which will then bring into the cabinet. We're not going to be utilizing a fancy BMS system, but that does mean we have to make sure the lengths of wires are equal and uh, so forth for equal charging and dis uh, discharge. So here AC4DM is going to do his best yoga pose down here underneath the bench. And uh, again, for a fella his age, he uh, outworks all of us. And he's uh, just fitting where that... Uh, uh, block uh, is going to be where we're going to bring in all the batteries and eventually we're going to connect wires from this block over into the cabinet. So we're going to go ahead and drill a couple holes and mount this underneath the bench, which he also built before lumber prices went 400% uh, sky high. So we're just finishing up installing this, uh, this block, this distribution block, and again, we're not using a BMS, so we have to make sure that all of our leads, positive and negative, are as equal in length as possible to achieve approximately equalization across all the batteries for both charging and discharge. So he's measuring how much length of wire we're going to need. Now, my sole job on this particular day was to cut these wires to length, put some heat shrink on both ends, and crimp uh, another end. We already had crimped some ends from a previous work day. So uh, here I am clipping these wires to make sure they're approximately the same length. And on balance, I did a good job of getting them the same length. I think I had to adjust one of the wires just a little bit to make them a little bit more equal. AC4DM uh, got out his trusty tools, and uh, we needed to create a hole in the bottom right corner of the cabinet to bring in power from the battery. So he is utilizing a hole punch here to uh, do just that on the cabinet. And we're also installing some conduit so that the wire can come through without uh, touching any of the cabinet itself. So just finishing up a little touch-up work on that conduit. And then we're moving on to uh, heat shrinking those connectors onto those equal lengths of wires. You'll notice we have some heat shrink and connectors on one end. We needed to cut them to length and then put the heat shrink and a connector on the other end. And here I am using those uh, Klein crimpers uh, that have been in uh, AC4DM's toolbox for many, many years and crimping those on as well as making sure we have some heat shrink put on. I'm not going to say I missed one of the wires with the heat shrink. I'm not going to say that, but let's just say we got the heat shrink and those connectors on. Now we're utilizing some uh, uh, battery power from an inverter, and uh, we're going to run a heat gun off of this so that we can actually uh, put uh, uh, the heat shrink on properly to those connectors. And uh, it's a noisy little bugger, but uh, once we got the heat shrink where we wanted it on the connector, then we utilized the heat gun to uh, tighten that heat shrink in and around so we have good connection and protection from uh, uh, wires touching each other. Mm -hmm. 
normally we would have used the color red here for the heat shrink, but we must have run out, so we're using a little bit of yellow on the uh, positive leads and black on the negative leads. Now we're uh, going to install some conduit along the wall because we're going to be bringing a heavy gauge wire from the battery distribution block over into the cabinet to the distribution panel where the solar panel power is coming in. So AC4DM is putting some hooks here so that we can attach this conduit to the shack wall. And once, once we have this done, we'll be running the wire through that conduit and then connecting it to the distribution block. You can see here, AC4DM again doing his best yoga here and uh, attaching the positive and negative leads to that distribution block. And then we'll be connecting the batteries a little bit later in the video. Threading through this heavy gauge wire, I want to say it was uh, six or eight gauge, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we had enough gauge there for the current that may go through this as we power the repeaters uh, and uh, any other accessories within this particular cabinet. So just finishing up running that heavy gauge cable through the bottom right corner of the cabinet where we had installed a hole and a piece of conduit there so that it uh, won't uh, get frayed. And the wire was working against us a little bit as we were pulling it through, but AC4DM eventually got that wire exactly the way he wanted it. Alrighty, so we're utilizing some nylon ties here just so that the wire will hang nicely and out of the way. And then we're going to move on to the next piece of business, which is getting these batteries hooked up. So this is on the back of the solar charging panel. You can see we've got our fuse. We've got some things already connected. We're going to have to disconnect those items so that we can connect the heavy gauge wire that's supplying our power to that uh, distribution panel. And it also is going to allow the solar charger to charge the batteries. So our equal lengths of positive wire, red, and negative wire black, as we'll see a little bit later, we're going to connect now to this distribution box. Remember, the heavy gauge wire is already installed, so now we're just putting the four wires for positive and the four wires for black on that distribution block. And AC4DM is going ahead and connecting those to the two batteries that we brought over from uh, HQ. We're also going to be taking the batteries out of the cabinet, uh, two more that are just like these batteries and we're going to put them next door. So you can see we've already brought one over here. This is the third one and here's our fourth battery coming out of the cabinet and this will be our battery bank uh, here in the shack and all we have to do is connect the positive wires and negative wires to this one as well. And eventually we move this bench out a little bit so that the batteries would be covered up uh, completely so it wouldn't be a trip hazard. Alrighty, so we're on the back of the solar panel charger, uh, charging uh, uh, panel as well, and uh, we're just adjusting some of the wires. That meter on the far left had actually gone out on us, and so we're essentially bypassing it. So we're just adjusting the wiring to bypass that meter, but uh, we're going to still use it as the positive termination block. So we're just going through and crimping, or not crimping, cutting the heavy gauge wire. And then we're also double checking our polarity. The wire was red on both, so we couldn't tell which was positive, which was negative. So KY4CKP is utilizing the multimeter here to see if we had negative or positive voltage. And once we knew what was positive, we knew which lead was gonna be negative. So that one in his hand is gonna be the negative lead. Then we're gonna add some heat shrink tubing to that lead so that uh, anytime we're working with these wires on the back of the solar charging panel, we'll know which one is positive and which one is negative. Now here, what we're doing is we're gonna be attaching the negative leads to the batteries, but you'll notice ac 4 dm is being very careful. We definitely don't want the negative wires to touch the positive while we're doing the installation. And of course, he's very good at being careful uh, since he's worked with electricity all his life. And here we're using the pneumatic crimpers to get a good physical connection on the other end of this heavy gauge wire that'll be connecting to our solar distribution uh, panel and then adding some heat shrink once again to cover up the connector uh, ends and making sure that the only thing that is exposed is what we're actually going to uh, uh, install on the panel. So that's our positive lead. Connecting that to the uh, now defunct amp meter that uh, 
uh, went out on us. And then we'll finish up the installation of this lead. Eventually, we have to come back and revisit this because we have to install the actual power distribution panel that the repeater uh, utilizes on these same two leads, the positive that Chris is working with here and the negative. And now we're back to adding these uh, negative equal length wires to the negative terminals on the batteries. Again, equal length here because we want the batteries to charge as equally as possible and discharge as equally. If the wires were a little bit different than length, then the, whichever wire was shortest would have the least amount of resistance and therefore would be used more so than the other batteries. So you make them equal length so that the batteries will be used equally for both charge and discharge. So we're finishing up adding those negative connections. We don't have everything connected yet on the solar charge side, again, being safe. And Chris had to do the grimace as we add a connector for the negative lead here and heat shrink that connection. So that again, will be much safer as we're working with these wires if we disconnect them in the future. You can see where that particular wire is gonna be connected on the back of the solar charging panel there where the negative lead is coming in. And here's Chris uh, going ahead and tightening it down. Now we had to come back and put a couple more wires there, one more wire there and on the positive lead for our actual power distribution that the repeater is plugged into. So here we are adding that distribution wire lead onto the back of that, uh, that particular post for the negative. And then once we have this done, we'll be pretty close to done with installing the batteries. And again, you need to do everything safely, good supervision by somebody who knows what they're doing. And here we're testing to make sure that we have the proper voltage across all four of those batteries coming in to the back of the panel. This is also where the solar charger is coming in. So we want to make sure that it can charge the batteries as well. Everything looked great and the repeater was uh, plugged in and powered up and we were good to go. A little bit of cleanup, and this workday is over. Coming up, we're going to get the MCOM trailer ready for field day. We'll have a video coming up soon about 2021 field day with Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Stay tuned and 73.